Hello. You're Quinn. looking very well today. Hey, thank that's you. A, thank that's you. a classy thank looking you for, shirt there. Uh, letting me borrow your shirt. Oh, I that's, always, my, that's right. That's my shirt. That's yes. why it looks so yeah, good. That's, yeah. I, I always forget on film day I can't wear black, and so yeah. you're so kind to let me borrow you gotta, your you shirt. you got to expand your palette a little bit here. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Anyway, looks right. good on you. Thank looks you. Looks good. So Welcome. To, so I'm excited today because yeah, uh, me too. We're gonna the, we we were trying to figure out like how to describe what is it exactly we're trying to accomplish. And the short answer is we're not trying to accomplish anything. We don't have a plan. We're really just shooting from the hip. Yep. But in this case, we uh, the idea was two classic kind of flagship examples of yep. dreadnought mahoganies, and then. Taylor yep. Grand Pacific, Grand Pacific mahogany. Uh, so not not yeah. a versus, not a head to head challenge, anything, but really just just uh, here's got, what you get. You got classic sounds, and you've got this new uh, incarnation building upon that sound. Mm. It's yeah. the new kid in, it's, in it's the, the new kid in the uh, the big three. We'll call yeah. them the big three. Yeah, Martin, the big three makers. Gibson Taylor. Taylor has never really tried to like go. I, yeah. I would say head to head, you know, because they've always been right. like. We've we've got a distinctive purpose where we've got applications. It's not to supplant yeah. or replace or compete directly. Right. This is a, another offering to maybe complement the larger uh, set yeah. of options that are out there for guitar players. Yeah. Okay. So sorry, I just shut off my phone. <laughs> it beeped. <laughs> that's all right. This is a tough day. Okay. So, we got noise upstairs. People yeah. are making that's right. noise. Well, it's you know, hey, we're These in the catacombs of Music Villa. Yeah. This is an active music store. Right. Deals are. Transacting, people are picking yeah. out instruments upstairs. Yeah, it's all good. And, and the these other are video, making noise. Yeah, we we've been They're for humming. whatever reason we're picking up a lot more sympathetic resonance uh, in the E, whatever that frequency range. Yeah. So I, I love that kind of yeah. The neat little it's all good stuff. This is one of the so a uh, uh, pro tip for guitar buyers. You know, when you're playing guitars, you sometimes you got to realize I'm not trying to sell out mm-hmm. any music store secrets, but when you're playing in a room full of guitars. Uh, you know, those other guitars are singing back to you a little bit. Yeah, so they're all you, ringing. Yeah, so it's not you're playing all of those guitars to it to an extent. So <laughs> if you really want to get a nice feel for what your guitar is going to sound like, you might want to find some isolation so yeah. you're not getting all the 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 chorus of guitars that are joining you. Yeah. Anyway, take it into some different rooms. Yeah, play it. Yeah. Okay. Now we're back gonna, to the. Video. We're going <laughs> to show you what each of these does. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily to compare them, but this, you know, was a bluegrass machine. I mean, mm-hmm. that's, but they're all mahogany guitars. They're all right. dreadnought-ish shape, right? right? They're all in that same type of category. They're the three big brands. Mm-hmm. Let's just see what each, what each one does because they're all different. And you're even going to play different stuff on each one. That's the thing. You know, think of all the iconic songs that were played on this, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, there probably wasn't a whole lot of bluegrass played on that, but I bet you there was a ton of 60s rock and you know mm-hmm. and country and really cool there's so many different things played on and same with this one mm-hmm. you know country rock but you know a lot of bluegrass on yeah, this there's one. there's a tradition that follows each of these yep. these flagship guitars uh within genres yeah you so know? so the point is they're different guitars even mm-hmm. though you know they're the same type of guitar they still have different formulas of how they're they're made so right. let's play it and yeah. then you play this one to what you think it you know well, what do you, you, you going to do? I don't. Well, I mean, one. I'm going to play what it probably you know the same stuff I've always played on <laughs> here. But you know, as, as you were talking about traditions, I was thinking like you know it's going to be curious to, uh, in 30 years to see where this guitar has found its niche and position within yeah. tradition and, and different genres totally. by different players. Um, Are these li- little young whippersnappers like in 40, 50 years going to be going? Oh yeah, maybe. Classic. Uh, oh yeah, that's gonna album. be the classic. And they had Grand the guy Pacific. play the, uh, yeah. the Grand Pacific. You never know. The vintage Grand Pacific. Yeah. There'll be some time. Yeah. What I notice when you play this guitar, uh, I'm not sure again. Always how it's gonna, how well it translates in the room. It's it's very even. There's some depth, but it's not like you know big bottom. It's uh, it's very even keel, which uh, I think as we've said before. Can make for a very performance-ready guitar or recording-ready guitar when you mm-hmm. plug it in, because uh, you're not fighting that feedback that tends to come from the low notes feeding back. So sure. probably very manageable on stage. Yeah. Uh, acoustically, it's pleasant and very well balanced. I 
always okay. feel like I'm talking about wines here. It has a nice yeah. earthy undertone. Mm-hmm. Nice okay. legs, good color. What song would you play on that? What, what's Colin? What, what, what does that guitar make you want to do? I don't know. I would probably do, um, you know, uh, funk versions of hip hop songs acoustically. Mm. I'm totally just kidding. I don't know what I would play. It would just be whatever, uh, whatever I was playing at the moment. I would probably play um, probably more finger style on yeah. this one. This good. would be a really good solo artist guitar. If right. you're talking about a guitar that would, I know we want to get to the others, but the. Um, I like that. That this, was good. I think this would be the type of guitar that the one guy or gal who is a singer songwriter wants a guitar for all styles. As a performance, as performance instrument, this would probably okay. fit that bill very well. And then what would you do on a classic? Oh, I. I always want to play that six chord, I'd like a like a Beatles chord. Yeah. Or another uh, yeah. yeah. It's when that was in the room, and hopefully it's transparent, you'll notice there's the, the growl, the low end. Yeah. The uh, the mids, it, again it's kind of that smiley face EQ is what I hear in the room. Very many J45s. We've done a lot of videos on J45s. Yeah, and I'm, they're they're wonderful. I I I don't know how to say it politely because I don't want to offend anybody. But um, there's I came to Bozeman as a Martin guy playing Martins, mm-hmm. uh, and I was like, man, you know, I'm a Martin guy. So I, I kind of held that identity, which was like a stiff arm to Gibson. Having the yeah. opportunity to play lots of Gibsons, yeah. I you know that that stiff arm is dissolving. Um, uh, I'm really enjoying Gibson. They each have little pockets of cool stuff that, that makes them unique. I don't know. It, just, it does sound like an old... It's a good old rockabilly, like rock, rock and roll rock, rock country. Song. Yeah, it just sounds good. And of course, you know... Now, in hearing this guitar, just playing it, it's, um, it's a little... De- the depth kind of extends, I think, through the mids a little bit more. Just to my ear, again, subject to what you're listening with through your computer or phone or whatever. I want to do that. I want to flat pick it. Yeah. It just, it, that's it's what this guitar feels like what it wants it to do. Yeah. So they're all wonderful. They're really, they're really all unique in their own way. Mm-hmm. They're all mahogany. They're all, you know, legendary guitar builders. So we have the Martin D18, the classic Gibson J45, the new uh, Grand Pacific uh, mm-hmm. 517, mm-hmm. and uh, that was cool. I think that was a I, good. Uh, was it this video or the one before? I can't remember. My memory is very short. But you, we were talking about like how many guitars should you have, and of course, from Paul's perspective, you should have as many as your house will hold. Or your uh, wife will let you. Uh, yeah. Or as many as your house can hide. Yes. Maybe yeah, there sometimes. You go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but what is this other guitar doing in the closet? But uh, <laughs> at the time, it was like, you know, I only have one guitar. I've got some other types of guitars, but they're very, I wouldn't niche-y. say n- niche, but they have very clear applications. I think what you're trying to say is you now realize you actually do need more guitars. I'm saying I wouldn't be opposed to having more guitars. There you go. Uh, and I think little videos like this show you why that's the case, because they do have very distinctive sounds. Uh, you, yep. like, like I said, I think when I first said that, when I play my one guitar that I play 98% of the time, regardless of the genre, it's the, the tone is always going to be consistent and sound yep. the same, which could be a plus, but there are times when you really want to draw out the difference uh, between uh, style of music or the song that you're singing or whatever. Yeah. And it's very clear that these guitars will satisfy uh, distinct applications in a way that is very appealing. Yeah. Right. Bluegrassy, rocky, you know, uh, honky tonky, whatever. And then this one I think you'd, you'd find for singer songwriters, finger style players. Yeah. Very applicable. Cool. Yeah. Well, thanks, Quentin. You bet. I think that was a good little. Uh, demo maybe we'll go to the end and do a little more
kind of compare them a little bit more just so people can hear the differences and uh, that'd be great so all available here at Music Villa and uh, we'll see you again soon thanks for watching <laughs>